I'd have never guessed that this old dog would get that super weak 28.209 beacon. Never in a million years. I just got this radio in from England. Just got dropped off this afternoon. Wasn't really working. I had a deox all these switches. Um, then it started working intermittently. Then I'm playing with the switches, deoxed them again. Then it started coming back around. And now it seems to be pretty consistent where if I flip a switch, I get what I'm supposed to get. Uh, the switches up here, I couldn't even get to those. So they're as they were, but I don't think there's anything wrong with them. I did open up the back. And uh, I could pull it. There were some wires holding the back cover to the chassis. And I, I could get it open about two inches, two, three inches maybe. And I could stick the, the, neat, the nose of a compressed air duster can. And I, I, I always like to blow out the tuning condenser. Those are those veins that as you tune, they mash together like this in and out. So I always like to like move it all the way to one way, blow it out, then move it all the way the other way and blow it out some more. And then just basically, you know, then kind of blow out the rest of the chassis. But I think that that tuning condenser was really the only thing that that, that might possibly have helped. Um, it seems a little bit more stable and sensitive since I've done that, uh, put it all back together. Um, Obviously, I do have it on the Wellbrook antenna. So there's a, a lead for the antenna and a lead for the ground. And there, it's like the Grundig satellites where it's just like a little hole in the side and you can't even really stick a wire in there. So I take a number three wood screw, which is really, really small. And I thread it in there about three turns and then I clamp my alligator clips onto that, one for the signal and one for ground. This one does not have a switch to activate the external. It, it just automatically, I guess, picks it up. You're seeing it, 28209. Now, how accurate is the dial? I, I don't know, two, like I, I always like to say, two, two aluminum wheels and a piece of dental floss. <laughs> Okay, it's like, <laughs> but anyway, I the fact that I was able to get it in, I am ecstatic. All right, so this, I'm sitting here doing the video, and the only reason I'm doing it right now is because I surprised myself when I caught that 28209 beacon, and I'm like, I'll never hear that again on this radio. I got to start the video now. <laughs> I don't even remember the name of the damn radio. I know it's a Mark, all right? And it's a something with a three-digit number, and the number starts with a one. I, I can't remember. It'll be in the title of the video when I upload it to YouTube, so you will you guys will know, because uh, I'll know by then when I upload it. I think it's a N151, but I, I could be mistaken. It'll be in the title of the video. Like I said, I bought it off eBay. It's a must be a year. Yeah, it's European only. Uh, it it came with a power cord, AC cord, hardwired in, um, and it had the the European you know, the actually it's I, I call it the UK plug, the United Kingdom plug, the three prong one, and it says two forty only. There's no option for one hundred and twenty volts. 
So I do have a converter that I use with a couple of my other radios, but it's like in another room way in a corner. And it's like, I, I, I did plug it into that when I first got it and everything worked. Well, except for the dirty switches. And then I says, then I says, all right, let's try the battery thing out. The battery compartment looked really nice and clean. Takes eight D cells. Yes, that you're not hearing me wrong. Eight freaking D cells. Sucker takes like $15 worth of batteries. Um, anyway, working great. Press for the light, lights work. Coarse tune, fine tune. And I don't know if you can tell how clean this thing is, but this thing is super clean. I, now I went over it with a toothbrush and a Clorox wipe and I, you know, got in there and did my OCD thing where I get into the crevices and the corners and all that stuff. But this unit is super nice. And you can see all that up there. That's the light. There's the VHF side. There's the AM side. And, when I, and I'll explain on, on the controls. It was hard for me to figure out at first how the hell I could make the radio work. <laughs> it's got this nice uh, a time converter here. You can tell what time it is. Two separate antennas, FM and uh, shortwave. When I hit it open to blow out the tuning condenser, there are two ferrite bars. Apparently one is tuned for long wave and one is tuned for medium wave. And uh, I was able to easily get my long wave beacons. What the hell, let's give it a try. Oh, and this will also give me a chance to show you because I'm um oh well we're on obviously 28 megahertz is am and it didn't drift we're still there so this is the bfo over here it works like that sony one cr160 so when you turn it all the way counterclockwise it clicks and it goes off then you click it on and then you got the bfo then you also have the rf gain and an auto uh, a, uh, AF um, automatic gain. So if you counterclockwise all the way, it clicks and you get um, automatic gain. But if you click it off of that, boom, you're immediately at zero gain and then you can ramp it up to max gain. But th you, that's, that's imperative for the super weak signals is to use this... Uh, a manual RF gain control. And since it does go all the way up to like 470 megahertz, it has a squelch. It has a selector between VHF and AM. And that was freaking me out at first because I'd never seen a radio like that before. And then your switch between AC and DC is on the front here. And obviously there's, there's a radio and a tape switch, so you can hook this up to a tape recorder, power, volume, tone, and squelch so uh yeah coarse tune fine tune so all your vhf are on this side all your ams are on this side so you actually see we actually have shortwave four and fm broadcast pushed at the same time but since we are on this switch down here is on am we're getting shortwave four now if i put this switch down now we're on FM broadcast. We also run medication like semaglutide, nature.com, and send us a new preferred customer. So that's a, and then this, it says VHF double conversion off or on. I just experiment with it. I, I don't know when it's supposed to be double conversion and when it, I mean, obviously in VHF, not in AM. But, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll play with that a little bit. Um, sometimes it didn't seem to make a difference. Sometimes it would just cut out the signal altogether and you couldn't get it. Um, but anyway. Uh, but, no, every, everything's working now. Um, let's, uh, oh, let's go to, all right, let's try long wave. All right. 
Long wave is the top. Oh, that sounds like. Oh, you know, that's why it sounds weird. It's because I didn't flip the switch from VHF to AM. See that? I'm still not used to it. Now we're on long wave. And right to that beacon. Nice. Again, we got the Wellbrook antenna hooked up to the external connectors on the side. So that's overriding the ferrite bars. And when we get to shortwave, it's also overriding the whip. Remember, there's two whips, one for FM, one for shortwave. Oh, there's 350? Let's see the 350 or 341. I keep forgetting. There might be 341. 257. I'm not going to slag it for that because sometimes you can't get 257 in Dallas on any freaking radio or antenna. So, uh, medium wave. I should back out a little so you guys can see what buttons I'm pushing. Uh, medium wave is here. following from the Supreme Court on presidential immunity that found Trump ineligible for criminal prosecution. U.S. dock workers that are currently on the court have apparently agreed to... Very nice uh, strength meter, or I should say tuning indicator. Very sensitive, works very nice. Very nice. And this is the story we've been following. This is day three of those dock workers. In the short waves... I mean, it's what time is it? It's uh, six thirty. We might get a couple of signals. Let's try like ten megahertz or something. That would be ten megahertz. Would be SW two. So that's Reverend Freak Show. Oh, there it is. Dang. Money. That's Reverend Freak Show 9980. There's WWV. Not bad. The line is not bad. Not terrible. Let's try 15. Not bad. I can live with that. 
and there's there might be some shortwave down here Yeah, I'll come back. I'll come back after it gets dark and we'll cruise the 49 meter band and the in the some of those other ones. And uh oh I was able to get uh on the air band too. The air band is VHF uh two which is here. Notice I pushed it and nothing changed because I've got to throw that switch, AM VHF switch, over here. All right. So let's see if there's still airplanes flying over my house. 118.425 is the most popular signal. And I can't remember if I'm supposed to be in double conversion or not. Yeah, what's 7,000? Whoa. That's it. That dude must be right over my house. Nice. Then I even, I was up, I was getting those weather bands at like 160 point something. And then I went into the top band, UHF, whatever that is, four or whatever. In like you know, in those those super high numbers, and basically all you get is a bunch of different digital shit, you know. And um, it, but it was getting it, so this thing's working great. At first, though, like I said, these switches were all freaky. The radio wouldn't play at all. Sometimes I'd wiggle it, even go sideways. I mean, it was you had a fight, you, but and. I was, I tried to look at, like I said, I took the back off, but I couldn't get anywhere near these. I had to drizzle the deoxit through the front. But you just lay it, lay it down so gravity's your friend, and then you spray straight down on top of it, and you just work it 20 times, and they're all working. They're working perfect. AM. That switch before was a bitch. It wouldn't, I couldn't get AM. Apparently the guys were whoever owned this radio was only listening to probably FM broadcast and that was it. That's the way it is with a lot of these portable radios. And then uh, also switching between radio and tape. Uh, but no, it's everything's working now. It's working good. I mean, when you can get that super weak twenty eight two hundred nine beacon, and you can tickle it in with the manual gain, and you can, uh, dude. This shit's working. I'm very, very pleased and surprised with this. And it looks beautiful. I, the, the looks are great. And, uh, yeah, that shows you that, you know, they, the contacts oxidize and corrode just sitting there without use. And I, just by looking at this radio, it's got to have been made in the late 60s, maybe the middle 60s, maybe the early 70s, maybe. And... Um, but no, it's it's working good. The meter is really sensitive. And uh, yeah, so I'll come back after the sun goes down and we'll cruise the uh, 49 meter band. But when I saw that 28 beacon come in, I'm like, this shit's working. Shit's working. Yeah, so... Uh, Maybe, maybe when I do the next video, I'll remember what the actual name and model number is. <laughs> All right. Thanks for hanging out.